on five points there. Thanks, Brian. Um, that kind of summarize what I'm saying. Um, so the first point um, is the Bible teaches us that because of our sin in our natural state, we always choose sin and never choose God. Um, so in John 8, 32, Jesus says that we're, um, anyone who sins is a slave to sin, which means we always do what, what our sinful desire wants us to do. Um, so what we call freedom, the freedom to do what we want is what God calls slavery, which is slavery to our sinful, selfish desires. As a result in Romans 3, Paul says, no one is good, not even one. And he says, no one seeks for God. In other words, this is, this is the challenging thing. There's no such thing as free will in the way we generally talk about it. None of us has a free will to choose sin or choose God. We always choose sin. So then the question is, how does someone become a Christian? This is point two. God chooses people not because of anything that they will do, but because of his grace. Um, Ephesians 1 repeatedly says that God chose us before the creation of the world according to his praise and his grace. Um, it says before the foundations of the world were laid um, that we should be holy and spotless. Paul says it's because of God's purpose rather than anything good in us. In fact, Paul says he chose us to be holy. So any good in us is a result of God choosing us. Um, Ephesians 1, 4 to 8 says, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Um, in fact, in verse 11, Paul says, God predestined us according to the purpose of him who works out everything according to the counsel of his will. So everything is planned by God and according to his will. Um, so, and he chose certain people to become Christians simply because of his, his will. We can't, that, can't ask any more than that. So that um, some people might be saved to the praise of his mercy, which Romans 9 says, and other people would be judged so that God might be glorified in his justice. That's what Romans 9, uh, 23, 24 says. So God is glorified in judgment and in, and in giving mercy to some. Um, point three, we come to place our faith in Jesus because God changes our heart. So how does someone who, who always choose sin trust Jesus? The promise in the old covenant in Ezekiel 36 is that God would give us a new heart by his spirit. Ezekiel 36 says, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I'll put within you. And I'll remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I'll put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. Um, so when we hear the gospel, God's spirit gives us a new heart that has faith in Jesus, which is a new desire. It's kind of like, you know, one, one day you hate licorice. Um, and then the next day you have a new desire for licorice. And you're like, well, how did that happen? Well, the, the new desire for Jesus happened because we listened to God's word and then he gave us a new heart with new desires. This is why Jesus says in John 6, 63, his words are spirit and they are life. And John 6, 44, Jesus says, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws them and I will raise them up on the last day. Point four, God chooses the means of sharing the gospel to achieve his plan to save um, those he's chosen. So some people would say, well, why should we share the gospel if God's just chosen people? Well, he has chosen that people would hear the gospel and come to faith as we share it. Uh, so he's planned both us going out and he's planned the people who we would go to. So we, we can't just say there's no point to share the gospel. And um, that's what we see in Acts 18, where um, God says to Paul, don't be afraid, keep on speaking, don't be silent, for I am with you because I have many people in this city. In other words, many he's chosen, so keep speaking so they can hear it. Um, and this is good news because if it was just up to, up to us to persuade people, no one would become a Christian because they're dead in sin, Ephesians 2 says. But because God chooses people when we preach, not even the hardest heart can resist. So the fifth point is, we must remember God has the right to determine what is right and fair. So we think, well, it's not fair that some people are chosen and, and other people aren't. And, and this is what Paul picks up in Romans 9. One of you will say to me, then why does God still blame us? For who is able to resist his will? Who are you, um, to, oh, human being, to talk back to God? 
Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, why did you make me like this? Does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay some pottery for special purposes and some for common use? So in other words, God is God. He has the right to choose what he does with his creation. And the thing is, no one has the right to be saved. All of us have rejected God. And so the fact that anyone saved, even one person is his mercy. And that is something we should praise God for. And that's something the Bible praises God for.